The Rock Crusher recording is, has all the features of our power attenuator, our Rock Crusher power attenuator, dual impedance, inductive reactive loads, great step attenuation, as well as our studio control so that you can actually listen to your speakers at low levels in a studio or in your bedroom, and a variable line out. But what we've added to that is a speaker emulator and a 11 band equalizer that basically allows you to come close to emulating almost any speaker that's on the market. Because it's tuned to the particular frequencies of the guitar, you're actually, with very narrow high Q filters, you're actually able to really dial in all those little nuances that speakers have. You have it down on 75 hertz on the bottom end, which is just below an open E and four kilohertz on top, which is like a third or fourth harmonic of a high E. So, but in this middle band here, things are so close together. What we, just, what we did was to create narrow band filters with high Q. The Q, as you all well know, is the ratio of bandwidth to amplitude. So high Q means it's a very narrow filter and your plus and minus 18 dB per octave. This is not a normal graphic equalizer. You can't do it with a normal graphic equalizer. You could, you'd have to have a 31 band graphic and spend a lot of time shaping the top and bottom ends of it to either eliminate a lot of the trash that's coming out of the amplifier, the high end distortion that you don't want to hear, that a normal speaker filters. A speaker is a big mechanical filter. So what we're doing is emulating the mechanical filter qualities electrically. Now the attenuator itself has EQ controls has a bottom end and it has one called warm and it has a top end called edge which you only hear through the speaker and of course you don't hear the equalizer controls through the speaker. So let's say you're going on the road with your band. You don't need to bring your speaker cabinets. You can use this as a load with your tops or your combos or whatever you want, run it into the board, have your in-ear monitors and that way you also save the trouble and freight of all those flight cases of speaker cabinets and so on. Or if you're in a recording studio, uh, just imagine being able to travel with this and your amp and your guitar, which means you can fit into a taxi once more, and be able to actually cut the gig by just taking this with you. Now for home recording, this thing is unbelievable because it gives you so many different options of tone. And as we found, a single microphone on a speaker really is only one sound. This gives you a whole rainbow of tones, which you can do. What you're gonna find is you're going to wind up using this thing without a speaker quite often. One of the, the issues that I have with speaker manufacturers is they graph their speakers on solid state amplifiers with voltage feedback that does not take into consideration the actual impedance curve of the speaker. When you use a tube amplifier, a tube power amplifier, with a speaker in a cabinet, the impedance of the speaker as well as the properties of the cabinet are actually going to reflect in the speaker's frequency response on a graph. So real world, which is what do the speakers sound like in the field with my guitar amp, is actually quite a bit different than what they show you in those nice little pages. Now I understand why they did that because there's all kinds of variables and tube amplifiers and so on. But when we do the graphing, we have to graph to the real world, not this laboratory standard. So we've been graphing our speakers and when we graph the speakers, we saw that there's a lot of anomalies in certain areas of frequencies that help to color the sound and actually create the visual footprint of the different speakers. So by focusing on those frequencies, we found, and this is a lot of trial and error, is to come up with the frequencies that we did. We utilize a lot of esoteric hi-fi and studio quality and military quality components on our, on our circuit boards for this equalizer. So for example, we use WEMA capacitors and we use high voltage electrolytic condensers and we use uh, metal film resistors in many locations and we do all that just to make sure that they're very consistent and have a super long life. Now, one of the problems with surface mount components is there's no polypropylene capacitors on surface mount components. So one of the reasons we use leaded compo or leaded components, I should say, is because we can be very choosy about what the capacitors are that actually go on the circuit board. So a lot of the audiophile stuff, it's impossible for them to use the polypropylenes because frankly, they melt. 
so you can't really use them on a surface mount. So these are leaded components. The other reason is serviceability. You can service this thing if it needs servicing you know, way down the, uh, uh, the pike. With these kind of quality components, those capacitors go for, you know, 10, 20, 30 years.